Hi, this is your host, Ryan, and I'm here today with our very special guest, Dr. Beverly Yates. Dr. Beverly is an expert on weight loss and women's health, including PCOS weight loss. She has over two decades of clinical experience. She is a caring doctor and a lifelong athlete. In her former career as an MIT-educated electrical engineer, Dr. Beverly was a problem solver. And now as a doctor, she continues to use her problem-solving skills to help other women solve their weight loss problems. Now, in today's interview, which is part of Dr. Beverly's PCOS Weight Loss Tips series, we're going to be talking about blood sugar blues. Beverly, welcome to the call, and thanks so much for being with us. Hey, how are you, Ryan? I'm glad to be here. Beverly, why don't we just dive right in? The first question I have for you today, because I know we've done a few calls about PCOS weight loss and some of the tips that you have, is do all women with polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is PCOS, do they always have problems losing weight or is it just some women? Yeah, that's a great question. You know what? The answer is no. Not all of the women who have PCOS uh, have problems with their weight, but the majority do. About 60% of the women who have PCOS also have difficulties with getting to and maintaining a healthy weight. But for many women with PCOS, frankly, this is the biggest issue that they face, and it's really tough to tackle. So, you know, you titled this interview Blood Sugar Blues. So what I'm guessing is that blood sugar has something to do with PCOS weight loss. Does My first question is, does blood sugar affect PCOS weight loss, and does blood sugar affect fertility if you have PCOS? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Blood sugar really impacts a lot of things about health, and particularly for women who are dealing with and struggling with PCOS. Yes, it does really affect profoundly their ability to lose weight. And for many women, when they understand that, it makes a huge difference in what they will do for treatment, how effective the treatment will be, and whether or not the treatment that they're being given can has any hope of being helpful. So women who have PCOS for a lifetime need to learn the value of managing their blood sugar. Interestingly, it also affects fertility. So here's the bottom line with the blood sugar thing. It does make it harder to lose extra PCOS-related weight. Eating sugar, period, causes a rise in blood sugar, and that's extra energy, right? And that rise in your blood sugar makes your body want to store that extra energy as fat. Particularly if you have PCOS, you're way more efficient at storing fat than you are burning that blood sugar for energy. That's the problem with PCOS. That happens each time that woman eats too much sugar at any one time. It doesn't mean she can never have sugars or starches or carbohydrates, but she has to be really, really thoughtful. You know, otherwise, this cycle of eating sugar and turning it into body fat is a really tough cycle, and it's going to be hard for her to break, much harder than other folks. It leads to continual, relentless weight gain and real problems with having any success and losing weight. And interestingly, for women in general, and particularly for women who have PCOS, uneven blood sugar that leads to this kind of relentless weight gain results in difficulty with fertility and it affects the ability to have a baby at all. For some women with PCOS, the difficulty with getting pregnant and having a baby is strongly tied, sometimes totally tied, to what is happening to their blood sugar. So if their blood sugar is getting whipsawed by eating too many sweets, grains, starches, or carbohydrates at any one time, then this is what sets that woman up who has PCOS to have chronic problems with her blood sugar, and it just goes on and on and on. And this is what leads to too much body fat and to excess weight. So balancing blood sugar is key to being successful with losing weight. If you have PCOS, Ryan, it's a must. So you, you started you touched on something, Beverly, and it's, it's kind of sparked my mind. You started talking about um, uh, sort of sugar and, 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 and spikes in sugar, and, and it led me to think about the idea of insulin resistance, right? Yeah. So insulin, is, insulin resistance is associated with diabetes, um, but – what I'm curious to know is when you talk about you know, managing blood sugar and why it's so important for PCOS weight loss, is it just another way to talk about being insulin resistant? So in other words, are blood sugar and insulin resistance, is that basically the same thing? Yeah, you know, this is an important point to understand. But, uh, managing blood sugar and being ins- insulin resistant aren't necessarily the same thing. Um, and I will go into more detail about what that really means in terms of being quote-unquote insulin resistant in future podcasts, because that's definitely worth one to two podcasts all by itself. There's enough detail there, enough, I think, confusion in the public's mind. I want to make sure anyone listening has real credible information. But for now, please know that keeping blood sugar as even as possible is the name of the game for the purposes of getting sustained weight loss with PCOS and staying and reaching um, a healthy weight. You know, in a current online survey survey that I'm leading, 
I hear from women and girls all the time about how hard they work at losing weight, yet no real results. And I also hear that the key issue is not knowing or understanding that blood sugar balance is the key to success for PCOS weight loss. They don't really know how to actually achieve this blood sugar balance. So they, they are different, insulin resistance and blood sugar balance. And yes, they are related, but they aren't the same. So then what happens if, say you're a woman uh, with PCOS and you're looking to lose weight and you just kind of ignore blood sugar and, you know, you just eat, eat like all your friends, you eat like everyone else that we know. You eat, you know, you do the sweets, the starches, you do, you know, <clears throat> grains and candy, you know, whatever we, every want. You have bagels for breakfast, you know, you do the bread, pasta at night, cookies, ice cream, pizza. What happens if you, if you kind of just eat like that? Well, you know what? If you're a woman or a girl with PCOS, this is a total disaster for you. This kind of nutrition really becomes an epic disaster if you're looking to lose weight. It simply won't work. Um, if your body responds that way to the starches and the sweets and the, the carbs, you know, where it just packs on the fat, then you're going to have to become really carb conscious. The reality is the PCOS will not let you get away with eating the same sugary sweet junk that other people do. Now, I want everybody to keep in mind who's listening to this that just because someone is slender or skinny, it does not. I repeat, it does not mean that they eat well. It just means that they appear slender. For some people, their bodies really do gain weight easily, and they struggle with weight loss. And in the case of PCOS, women and girls struggling with it find that they gain weight much more easily than others that they know, including other members of their family and other blood relatives. It's really, really not fair. It's not fair at all. Now, if you're listening to this and this describes your situation, please don't waste any time feeling bad about it. Just you need to go into action mode so you can do something about it. It's a real issue and not your imagination. So let me explain. Sugar is a super fast source of energy, and it helps you to immediately feel better. It's fast fuel. It gives you fast energy for a short period of time. And that's the trap. The sugar you eat gives your blood sugar a fast rocket ride up, like I talked about earlier, that whipsaw. And then just after this rocket ride up comes a sugar crash, leaving you feeling tired and crabby, bloated, and steadily fatter. This is an important part of how the weight gain associated with PCOS builds up steadily over time. So if you have PCOS, you must pay attention to keeping your blood sugar as even as possible, meal after meal, day after day. It's an important part of how you get to winning with PCOS and enjoying well-deserved weight loss success. Finally. You know, that sounds tough. Uh, you talk about kind of keeping your blood sugar even with all the temptation that you have and all the, all the foods. I mean, we just went through, I just kind of rattled off a few types of food there. And, it, you know, listening to this, you think, well, what isn't? you know, on that list. Is there, is there anything else you could do to maybe help stabilize or manage your blood sugar? Like, are there any, I don't know, like medicines or herbs or supplements that can kind of help make a dif difference specifically for PCOS weight loss in terms of managing your blood sugar? Yes, yes, there are. And in a future podcast, in fact, two different podcasts in the series, we'll go into more detail on some of the medicines, both the pharmaceutical medicines and natural medicines that are used with PCOS to help manage blood sugar. It's such a core issue. It's like the bullseye on the target, you know, in terms of how you handle PCOS. So one example would be the pharmaceutical drug called metformin, and I will cover that one more in depth in the series because I know a lot of um, women have questions about that, again, via the online survey that I'm doing and from other research and just, you know, years of experience, the issues with metformin come up. Some women respond so well to it. Others of them um, get sick. And so, you know, we'll dive into that one at another time. Another example of a natural medicine that's helpful with blood sugar is an herb called fenugreek, F-E-N-U-G-R-E-E-K, fenugreek. Now, let's take a moment and talk about this one specific herb for blood sugar balance. Fenugreek is a particular herb that is helpful with reducing annoying cravings for sugar. It's also been used for centuries in India and other parts of the world to help improve blood sugar balance. Now, fenugreek is used as a flavoring herb in cooking, in Indian cuisine, and other cultures of southern and southeastern Asia. And fenugreek is available uh, in lots of places in a number of forms, including leaf, seed, and powder forms. Usually health food stores, sometimes drug stores, often supermarkets, sometimes ethnic supermarkets, you can readily find fenugreek av available. It has a very pungent flavor and smell. I personally think it's delicious. Now, where do you get that sort of thing? Is that something you get at a, at a health food store, or do you have to special yes. order that sort of thing? Usually you can get it in many communities at a health food store, or if you have ethnic markets or um, Asian markets, um, it should be pretty available. Sometimes you can find it in um, the supermarkets like, say, a Safeway or something like that, but places like Whole Foods and other folks, they definitely have fenugreek. And if for some reason you don't have it in your community, I'm certain you can get this sort of thing online. You can order it. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned it's the sort of thing that's been used traditionally for centuries. Um, 
excuse me, but is there any, you know, talk about modern medicine, right? Yeah. Um, is there any sort of science or research uh, that supports using herbs or supplements for, you know, helping you out when it comes to PCOS weight loss? Yes, yes, there is. You know, it's really interesting. We're learning things all the time. You know, doctors, for the work that we do, we call it a practice for a reason. You know, I just did a talk on the weekend for my colleagues for continuing medical education, and I always remind folks to be humble. You know, humility goes a long way. There's a reason why we call the work we do a practice. And one of the joys of science and research is that we can really nail something down and quantify, yes, this is helpful, we don't know, or no, we know it's not helpful, you know, somewhere on that spectrum. So in this case, I decided to put together a helpful guide called the Ultimate PCOS Weight Loss Herbs and Supplements Guide. And I can tell you how to check out some of this research for yourself if you'd like to go behind the scenes and learn more about it directly. You know, some of the people that I'm working with right now are other health professionals, whether they are doctors or nurses, therapists. And so they, they love to get, you know, behind the, the scenes, if you will. So I'll tell you more about my guide soon. But first, let's take a quick visit into some of the research and science behind these herbs, vitamins, supplements, and other nutrients that can affect PCOS and these blood sugar issues that can be so troubling. In particular, let's continue this conversation about fenugreek as a potentially healing herb. Research indicates that fenugreek appears to be helpful to improving blood sugar balance by specifically slowing the absorption of sugars in the stomach and promoting the production of insulin. Now, if you've dealt with PCOS at all, you probably know that insulin and uh, blood sugar and the sugar you um, eat make a difference and need to work well together. So insulin is a hormone that brings your blood sugar into the cell and makes it available for energy. When the insulin that your organ called the pancreas makes doesn't work so effectively, it makes it easy for you to gain weight and specifically to make more body fat. And particularly, it's going to appear around your belly area. You know, that belly pooch will just get bigger and bigger and bigger. This is part of that process and phenomenon called insulin resistance. It's also what makes you feel sleepy and tired after eating too much food especially foods that are high in the sweets, the grains, starches, or other carbohydrates like we talked about a bit ago. So, now Beverly, I guess if someone's listening to this and um, they want more help, what can they do? You mentioned your guide. Like, What are some of the resources out there? Yeah, so if they want to discover more about, say, the natural ways to improve and balance blood sugar, specific herbs and supplements that research has shown may help improve blood sugar and issues related to that, and then the relevant nutrition and dietary choices, along with good sleep habits and other lifestyle elements. You know, if you don't sleep well, you're not going to lose weight. And many people who struggle with their weight really have to get their sleep straightened out before they're going to lose weight. You know, all these things combined can help a PCOS sufferer to get better control over her blood sugar so that she can finally lose the weight and keep it off. And so you're going to need to pay careful attention to the tips that are offered in this recording and in other recordings that are part of this series. These tips are specific and designed for women with PCOS who are looking to lose weight and to gain some control over something that has likely been a super frustrating problem and filled with more, more failure than success. You know, I want to help you tip the odds in your favor. So as you listen, I truly hope you get a better feel for how important blood sugar control is to success with losing P PCOS weight and to dealing with PCOS in general. So if you'd like more information right now, I put together a useful, helpful guide called the Ultimate PCOS Weight Loss Herbs and Supplements Guide, which covers the herbs, vitamins, and supplements in depth, along with some helpful bonuses like the Better Sleep Guide that is included as part of this guide. So if you want to sign up for the email list or you want to buy the guide, you can go to http colon slash slash www.pcosweightlosstips.com right now for more information. Yeah, this is great, Beverly. And one of the things that I like about your work so much is it's so focused. I think, you know, the the problem when you're searching online for information, whether it's on topics like PCOS weight loss or really anything you can think of, is information overload. And it's having to wade through all that information that really isn't doesn't really one hundred percent apply to your situation. And what I love with what you've done is your stuff is so focused. It's only focused on PCOS weight loss, so 100% focused on helping women who suffer from PCOS looking to lose weight, not other types of weight loss. And your guide in particular is all focused on kind of getting, you know, wading through all the information that's out there and giving you, you know, this is exactly what you need to know when it comes to herbs, vitamins, and supplements and helping you lose weight. So... Um, I highly recommend anyone listening to this, uh, go ahead and check out that guide. Now, 
the next question I have for you, Beverly, is you know we've we've talked a lot about uh, you know sugar spikes and 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 insulin resistance. Um, when it comes to balancing your blood sugar, for women and girls that are dealing with PCOS weight issues, what's the number one most important thing that they need to know about meal time, about eating meals that make sense for them? Yeah, you know this is a this is always a mystery to people. And when I talk to them about how they eat, and I ask. And, you know, some of the folks have some pieces of good information, but they haven't applied it in the right order. So people get confused, you know, and goodness knows you can hear so many contradictory things about nutrition within a one-day period, never mind over the course of a month. And it's understandable. So here's the deal. Here's what matters. For women with PCOS, blood sugar balancing needs, want to lose weight, you have to eat lots of fiber, and specifically the non-starchy vegetables, the ones that are lower in starches and that have friendly kinds of starches. So they're rich in fiber, and they're not so rich in the kinds of sugars that will drive your your weight up. So things like kale, chard, spinach, any of the vegetables you can find on the low glycemic index, those are going to be your friends. And uh, generally speaking, you want to concentrate on anything that contains about five carbs of serving, five uh, carbohydrates per serving or less. Keep it low, keep it low, keep it low. And that really, really helps you to avoid those big spikes in blood sugar that lead to the classic PCOS weight gain and increase in body fat percentage. And I know some women are a great fan of the whole calorie counting and they will literally count leaves of lettuce. Ladies, please stop that. That's just silly. You know, (laughs) you have other things to do with your day. Don't think that because you had that fifth leaf of lettuce, that's why you gained two pounds. That's ridiculous. It's not true. The vegetables that are high in fiber and aren't uh, really high in starch like the, the dark leafy greens are going to be your friends all day long. And there's lots and lots and lots of choices. You know, there's um, collard greens, there's the, the Asian green vegetables, like the bok choys and the mustard greens. And there's so many, many choices. And if you're in a community where access to these foods is not so high, if you can even have a little container garden, maybe you're in an apartment or something like that, you know, just a pot or two of soil, you can grow a lot of good things for yourself. You don't necessarily have to be on acres and acres of land to, to make this work. So women always ask me, you know, how much fiber-rich food is enough for this purpose? So, okay, ladies, look at your plate that you're going to use for your meal, and you're going to make it about half of your plate. That's right, half or more of your plate is going to be these friendly, fibrous, non-starchy, deep, dark green leafy vegetables, okay? That's our goal, half or more of your plate. You're going to fill up on that food. It's so nutrient-dense, it's not calorie-high, and it doesn't have the kinds of sugars that will cause you to gain that fat. You know, the other quarter of your plate can be um, nutritious kinds of protein, and I would strongly recommend considering using um, fish, grass-fed beef, or chicken, preferentially, let's say, over beans. If you want to be more vegetarian or vegan about it, then lentils are probably going to be okay. Some of the beans can be a little too starchy for the purposes of PCOS weight loss. We'll go into that in more depth in a different recording, um, but just to honor the time that we have for this. So fiber and fiber-rich friends are your friend, totally. Fiber and fiber-rich foods are your friend when working to keep your blood sugar as even as possible for losing weight when you have to deal with this PCOS and its realities, you know. And frankly, just as important, read all labels, please, for your foods, your drinks, and your snacks carefully, particularly if you've noticed that the packaging has changed. Anytime they make the packaging look all sexy and pretty and jazzy, that usually means the contents of the product has changed. So just because you've used it for the last 12 years doesn't mean that the contents are still the same. So read those labels, okay? And look at the carbohydrate content. Again, you're trying to keep your total carbohydrates low for what you eat in any given meal so that you don't accidentally spike your blood sugar. Try for keeping the meals at 25 to 30 grams of carbohydrate content, sugars or lower, with the sugars, quote-unquote, labeled as carbohydrates on your food labels, 25 to 30 grams or lower per meal. That's your target, okay? You've got to draw yourself a bullseye. Put that information right in the center. You're going to keep beverages as snacks at 10 grams of carbohydrates or lower. So what some folks do, you know, like if they have kids or if they're eating out, what they'll do is if they want to have a soda, and I'm not saying a soda is a health food. I'm not even remotely trying to say that. But if you're going to do it, measure it. So if the whole can of soda is 40 grams of carb, you can't have more than 10 at that time. So that means it would be 25% or a quarter of the can of soda. And you're going to eat your fiber and your protein first. So your vegetables and your proteins go in your mouth first. 
and that will help dampen the effect if you're going to cheat and have something like a small amount of soda. You don't dare drink a whole soda all at once. It's way too many carbs at one time. Unless, of course, you want to stay stuck with issues with PCOS weight loss and put yourself into PCOS weight gain success. Okay, that's how that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny. You you triggered a couple thoughts um, as you were walking through that, Beverly. One is you know, uh, sometimes it's it's funny. Food companies out there for some of the less healthy food options, like soda, for example, have you know they've come out with more and more of these sort of small cans. Mm-hmm. So you know the portion control is is done for you, um, and that even might be too high of an amount because I don't I don't know offhand how large those those cans yeah. are. Yeah. But you keep one of those in your purse or you hang onto it with you. Well, worst case scenario. Even if you lose control, you're, you're going to drink the whole half can rather than the whole uh, full can or a uh, or 24 exactly. ounce or 36 ounce, whatever the size is for the, yeah. the big bottles. Yeah. Um, and then the other thought was when you were talking about reading food labels, um, recently I saw a news report about a food, and I can't remember if it was a breakfast cereal or if it was like a cookie or a snack item or something like that. Mm-hmm. But anyways, on the front of the box, you know, it said something like, you know, new now vitamin C added. And you think, oh, <laughs> vitamin C added. That that's great. You know, they're trying to be healthy. Um, but here's the kicker: when you turn the box around and you looked at the actual label, mm-hmm. the actual nutrition data, it was zero percent vitamin C. Yep. So I don't know how they got away with that. If it was a, a, a you know, it's at a certain amount, a trace amount, they can legally say that. Or if it's something that slipped by the authorities, or if it was a misprint on the box. But uh, the, me- the the moral of the story, the message there is to follow your advice and to really read the ingredients carefully on the back of the label, not what the marketing um, you know message says. On the on the front of the box. Yeah, that's a great point that you raise. It's true. There's all kinds of trickery, sometimes mistakes, but sometimes really it's purposeful trickery. And also look at the serving portion, because sometimes the serving size, you know, it might be two chips, two uh, corn tortilla chips, let's say, or two um, potato chips, or it might be 18. It makes a difference. Look at the serving size and then figure out how much of it you can actually eat. Um, if you feel that you really need to eat these things that we know are going to be trouble. So you don't set yourself back really for weeks per, the, per purposes of work for just a moment's, you know, indiscretion. Yeah, you just got to you got to balance these things out. Right. And I love your advice to fill up on the kale, chard and spinach and those types of foods, because if you're going to overdo it on anything, right, right, because you feel like you need to really fill your stomach, if you're going to overdo it on anything, <laughs> you know, you, you, overdoing on a little extra kale is probably as good as you can hope for. So. I tell you, you're right. That, that's our goal. If you're going to overdo it, please dive into those dark leafy green vegetables. Those are your friends. So is there anything else, any more good quality sort of, you know, I know you really pride yourself and focus on giving, you know, credible, well-researched information. Is there anything else that would be helpful to know about blood sugar um, in this recording series? Yeah. Yeah, uh, another recording that I had done recently has some really wonderful information and is is very much a partner to this recording. So check out the tips and info in the second recording of the series where I talk about why using artificial sweeteners and fake sugars is not a good idea. And it might directly get in the way of PCOS weight loss success and help you with um, avoiding PCOS weight gain. Many people use those fake sugars thinking it's going to help them and it can be a trap in a very different way that's not obvious. And research has shown clearly the um, the linkage between those things, and I, I know the general public doesn't know that stuff. Um, so the title of that recording is PCOS Weight, Craving the Truth About Sugar. Of course, it's free, that information. You're welcome to look at it anytime online in the iTunes podcast section, or you can look for it on YouTube or, in, or on my website, http colon slash slash www.pcos-weight-loss.com slash blog. So I sure hope you've learned something of value from this recording. And for more info, go to http colon slash slash www.pcosweightlosstips.com right now, now for more information. Beverly, as always, thank you so much for your time today. Hey, you're welcome. Take care. As Beverly mentioned, to learn more about Dr. Beverly Yates and her programs and to actually get a complimentary free report containing some weight loss tips and secrets that we didn't yet cover in this interview, which are all geared specifically for women with PCOS, you can visit PCOSWeightLossTips.com. Once again, 
That's P-C-O-S, weightlosstips.com. Thanks so much for being with us. Take care.